Well, folks, we'll we'll, we'll ask we'll ask uh, we'll ask uh, Andrea. Andrea, would you pray for us? Yeah. Before we start, my dear, that would be really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are able to meet together this evening. And we just hope that um, we can open your word and that we will learn and grow from all that you want us to know. Mm -hmm. And we just um, thank you for today and for all the things that we've been able to do and share. And we are just glad that we can come together now to share together and to learn more of you. Mm -hmm. And we just want to thank you. And we just um, ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 It's always good. always a good wee trick that to make sure people are with us. So watch out, everybody, in case a pounce on you uh, through the Bible study, including you, Sandra, sitting away in the background there. I might, we well, see Sandra will be out the door like a rocket if I do that. I, I promise not to. Well, folks, we we come back to our Bible study and very much uh, round two of the study material that we began last Wednesday. So we return to the book of Daniel, uh, but this time we move forward in the book of Daniel to chapter six. So take take a moment, everybody, to to uh, to get your text looked up and in front of you. And in a few moments' time, uh, then we'll journey through uh, the chapter together. Daniel chapter six. I was going to give you the page number in my Bible, but that would be no earthly use whatsoever. Everybody's numbers will be different. So what we're going to do is, is I'm going to fly through the chapter just to, to give us a, a skim through the text itself, but then we'll come back and highlight the major happenings and the groups of verses that those major happenings can be found in. Uh, but let me read from verse one of chapter six. And the lions that I had up last week make a, make a return and, and a starring role this week. Darius the Mede decided to divide the kingdom into 120 provinces, and he appointed a high officer to rule over each province. The king also chose Daniel and two others as administrators to supervise the high officers and to protect the king's interests. Daniel soon proved himself more capable than all the others and the, all the other administrators and high officers. Because of Daniel's great ability, the king made plans to place him over the entire empire. Then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs, but they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn. He was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. So they concluded, our only chance of finding grounds for accusing Daniel will be in connection with the rules of his religion. So the administrators and high officers went to the king and said, long live King Darius. We are all in agreement, we administrators, officials, high officers, advisors and governors, that the king should make a law that will be strictly enforced. Give orders that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone divine or human, except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions. And now your majesty issue and sign this law so it cannot be changed, an official law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be revoked. So King Darius signed the law. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room, with its windows open towards Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. Then the officials went together to Daniel's house and found him praying and asking for God's help. 
So they went straight to the king and reminded him about his law. Did you not sign a law that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone divine or human, except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions? Yes, the king replied. That decision stands. It is an official law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be revoked. Then they told the king, that man Daniel, one of the captives from Judah, is ignoring you and your law. He still prays to his God three times a day. Hearing this, the king was deeply troubled and he tried to think of a way to save Daniel. He spent the rest of the day looking for a way to get Daniel out of this predicament. In the evening, the men went together to the king and said, Your Majesty, you know that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, no law that the king signs can be changed. So at last the king gave orders for Daniel to be arrested and thrown into the den of lions. The king said to him, May your God, whom you serve so faithfully, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. The king sealed the stone with his own royal seal and the seals of his nobles so that no one could rescue Daniel. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night fasting. He refused his usual entertainment and couldn't sleep all that night. Very early the next morning, the king got up and hurried out to the lion's den. When he got there, he called out in anguish, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God, whom you serve so faithfully, able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, long live the king. My God sent his angel to shut the lions' mouths so that they would not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight, and I have not wronged you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed and ordered that Daniel be lifted from the den. Not a scratch was found on him, for he had trusted in his God. Then the king gave orders to arrest the men who had maliciously accused Daniel. He had them thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. The lions leapt on them and tore them apart before they even hit the floor of the den. Then King Darius sent this message to the people of every race and nation and language throughout the world. Peace and prosperity to you. I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed and his rule will never end. He rescues and saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, folks, a, a long passage, but a full passage, uh, a very well-known uh, tale within the adventures of Daniel in the book that bears his name. Uh, but just to help us really make sure that we've got the key elements of that chapter in place, let me just go back uh, and review the chapter and put it into little brackets with a title. I suppose we need to notice from the first two verses of the chapter how high up the ranks Daniel has risen within the empire. Uh, we're told about the new leadership structure that the emperor has placed across the kingdom, 120 regional governors ruled by three overseers, and Daniel is the head of all of that. Uh, I can't imagine uh, what the, 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 the equivalent title would be, but I suppose uh, in our own, it, it seems very demeaning to say he's Edwin Putz 
I, d I don't know if that's mm -hmm. if that is at all helpful uh, or or is he Paul given the first minister uh, is is he is he the prime minister I think we're getting we're getting places then uh, that you know he has risen right up through the ranks and because no doubt because of that his popularity how good he is at his job in verses three to seven we see jealousy and a plot being formed by the those who were immediately under Daniel in the governmental structure maybe they thought because of heritage or nationality or wealth or position, they should be who he is. And they determine uh, to, to weave a deceitful plot uh, and start to plot and plan. And it really brings memories to me of the scribes and the Pharisees and their behavior when encountering the ministry of the Lord Jesus. There's just, there's just something very similar uh, about their, their, their very blunt and obvious uh, conniving ways. And then from verses 8 to 15 of the chapter, we see uh, the plan enacted and the trap is sprung, where the emperor himself is tricked into passing a, a terrible law, uh, and a law that looks, uh, in, in, in one way, uh, it's buttering the king up. Nobody should pray to anybody except you. You're so great. Uh, but a law that is going to trap Daniel, because they know that he has a strict regime of prayer. Uh, and, and, and the detail is very deep here. The windows of Daniel's house are open. Uh, they're facing where Jerusalem would be. And three times a day, Daniel would be found there praying to his God. And they, they know all of this. So the trap is sprung. And then from verses 17 to 22, we have the, the, the long night. Uh, the king tries everything uh, to, to get Daniel out of the predicament. Uh, he realizes instantly that he's been trapped, but there doesn't seem to be any way out of it. And this law of the Medes and Persians is cast up to him over and again. You know, mm -hmm. great king, no law like this that's been signed can ever be broken. Uh, and, and he knows that only Daniel's God will save him from this uh, pit filled with lions. And a long night of prayer and fasting seems to ensue, uh, both in the palace and I would imagine in the lion's den as well. And then towards the end of the chapter, we see the miraculous rescue of Daniel and the sad demise of those who plotted his downfall. And that amazing message uh, at the end of Daniel chapter 6, where basically, call it a revival, uh, call it a, a reformation, uh, but a decree goes out to the whole world, whole empire, uh, that only Daniel's God is to be worshipped. Uh, so quite a remarkable chapter. And those are all the major little events sort of highlighted for you. I hope that I hope that helps a little bit. But I want to I want to take us back and Emma, this will be a test for you because you did last week's study. I want to I want to get us uh, questioning and talking together a little bit. Way back in in chapter one where we studied last week, we see Daniel making an unusual stand. And it seemed to be all to do with his diet. I'm sure you remember that from, from last week. Uh, and, and I want to delve into that a little bit uh, because th there's a very interesting word attached to Daniel's decision uh, to, to ask for a vegetarian diet, a simple diet. 
Uh, and in, in Daniel 1 and elsewhere in the book of Daniel, we hear that he took that stand so that he would not defile himself. Now, folks, op open all the, the, the forum here. Uh, if you're on mute, take yourself off mute. Why, why do you think or, or, or delve a little bit behind that uh, as, you know, is, is there something, a clue there for you as to why Daniel in particular chose this line not to cross? Uh, and why would that word defilement be used? Any ideas? Maybe you have to define the your son. Maybe it was a great son in his eyes. If he had eaten something that wasn't allowed, you know, it wasn't allowed for the, the Jewish people. That, 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 yeah, a good, a good, and I think we did touch, we maybe did in some of our conversations last week, I think Emma led us into, into some of this detail, and, you know, ob obviously pork and things like that are, are ritualistically unclean in, in, a, in a traditional Jewish culture and a diet, so obviously going to a vegetarian diet, a simpler diet, is going to avoid that. I think, I think Alec, I'm pushing you a wee bit more in that I think there's a wee bit more to this uh, that is good, it's good for us to know. Mm -hmm. Any, anybody else got to go venture a, a theory? It's not a trick question. I, I think I think you probably do know the answer, but you're maybe afraid to say it. Could, could, could it be that this is his faith and he's very strong in his faith? Say that again, Derek. There's lawnmowers going on my end and it's hard just to hear. Let me close the window oh. here. Go ahead, Derek. Is it uh, that Daniel's very strong in his faith and he says forever... They, they throw at me, I, I'm sticking by how I want to live and who I believe in and, and the way I want to live. I think, I think Derek, you're getting closer to the jackpot in, in your answer there. Uh, in, in that scholar, scholars who know the history, the period of history that Daniel is set in and the country and the countries of the empire that Daniel is set in, it would be absolutely commonplace, especially uh, uh, not just in palaces, but in every humble home, uh, for the food that is about to be eaten to be dedicated to a whole host of pagan gods. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that is an ongoing issue right up to our Lord's time. Mm -hmm. And he himself is questioned several times by, by, by Jewish lawyers about what you should eat and when you should eat it and how you should eat it. So there, there, there I think, is behind uh, the, the, the decision that Daniel made. He was deciding that he needed to remain pure in God's eyes. So, Derek, you are coming very, very close. And, and Alec, he didn't want to, to uh, act in any sinful way. He didn't want to uh, inadvertently or deliberately be part of the worship of a set of foreign gods. Mm. And if he was just going to eat the food set before the king, that would be part and parcel of the preparation of all those meals. Uh, before they arrived in the king's table, they would have been taken before a statue or a whole pile of statues and priests and incense would have been lit and prayers would have been prayed uh, to a whole host of foreign gods. Uh, so the defilement, the avoidance of defilement right back in chapter one shows an intention in Daniel uh, not to cross any line that would impair his faith in his God. So there's a wee bit more to that decision to eat a very different diet than perhaps first met the eye. And I thought it was good to just come back to that 
because I think it adds a bit of strength to the Daniel we see in chapter six, uh, who is faced with a mighty, mighty temptation. But I suppose uh, pr prompted by, by that we exploration of Daniel's mindset, are, are there things today, and this is, this is a question for 2021, are there things that you encounter, I encounter, we all encounter in our everyday lives that you, from a spiritual perspective, have drawn a line in the sand about to honor Almighty God? Is there behavior, is there things in our everyday world around us that you have decided as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am not going to do that. I do not want to be defiled, to use a Daniel world. Uh, Daniel word, is there anything, uh, you know, it's, it's a, maybe a, a bit of a probing question, but I think it's a good question to, to think about. Well, I could think of some things, but I mean, uh, that I wouldn't, that a line that I wouldn't step across that would compromise my faith. Yeah. I mean, it would not be too popular with, uh, what would you say, secular society at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Very difficult one. Well, there's, there's uh, big, uh, the law now of abortion, for instance, I have a very strong feeling about that, and that's a very difficult one. Yeah. But yeah. I, would, I, I'm very, I, I would feel very strongly about not aborting, uh, would you, if you like, healthy children. Yeah. yeah. One thing I would, uh, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. You know, it's a, it is a very difficult one when a child is going to be. Uh, Handicapped or something, if you think it's going to be severely handicapped. I mean, uh, if I have a difficulty with that one, you know, yeah. not abortion law. Oh, thank you, Alec. I mean, that's a good example, uh, you know, it, but that is you as a follower of God mm -hmm. working out where God and what God would, would have you do mm -hmm. in a particular place. Mm -hmm. Is there any other, you know, uh, a, a lot of these are w w would tend to be controversial, mm -hmm. as was Daniel in the day. Mm -hmm. You know, when you just think the whole law of the land has been changed five minutes ago, mm -hmm. and Daniel's deliberately not doing what the new law of the land is, he is acting in great public controversy. So your example, Alec, is not as far away from taking us to Daniel's experience than, than we might imagine. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a simple one for me, because, mm -hmm. you know, for, like it or not, I, I am a season ticket holder for Balamina United Football Club. Mm -hmm. And every time there, there's a home match, I am faced with the temptation of swearing like a trooper <laughs> from five minutes before the match starts to 15 minutes after the match ends because everybody around me, including youngsters that can hardly walk, but their vocabulary is very advanced, and the linesman is a so-and-so, and the referee is a son of a so-and-so, mm -hmm. and the other linesman is a so-and-so, and that goalkeeper is a so-and-so, and the opposition manager hasn't got two so-and-sos to rub together. <laughs> and that for, for the entirety of the match, if you want to join in uh, with what is supposed to be banter, mm -hmm. your language, my language, would have to totally change. Mm -hmm. And do you know the temptation is, it sounds silly, but it's not silly. No. Because you're the only one. You're the only one not singing that song. You're the only one trying not to take the Lord's name in vain repeatedly. And, you know, and, and uh, you, you know, I've even been tapped on the shoulder and boys said, are you all right? You're a bit quiet. <laughs> you know, and... <laughs> But I, I, I don't want to cross that line. I, I don't want to cross that line. I don't want to take the Lord's, 
Lord's name in vain. And I try, not just in a football match, but wherever I am, not to just join in with the way that society speaks, which is appalling. And a lot of you fellas have worked in work environments, uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, where it is commonplace across the board to swear like troopers from morning to night. Uh, and, and it's 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 a difficult one to survive in. That that's an example that I have. But for any others or any anything well, else, that's that, a very good example because uh, I remember meeting a, a fellow that I worked with, and he, he had actually become a Christian, mm -hmm. and that's how I noticed the difference in him. Yeah, was working in the where machinery was breaking down, and they were in bonus and. I was the engineer and had to fix the machinery and I went round to him and, and I actually noticed the difference in him the way with the way he was uh, dealing with the problem. Yeah. He, uh, that he wasn't swearing or which was a normal thing to do because yeah. he had just become a Christian. Wow. And I, I noticed that that was that was something and that was he, he was he was witnessing without even speaking. Wow. <laughs> like, that's very interesting, yeah. That's yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So the, the machine, the machine's parentage, and all the rest of it was called into question. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Quite, quite regularly, oh, and, was, and uh, with, in the old self. And even but that even, was a real, real difference. That's interesting. Even that's your interesting. Would have been called into question what you were. Why, why were you so long and all that kind of stuff? But yeah, yeah, yeah. Only keep them cool, and you know what's the difference on them. I think it's a good it's a good question, and Daniel Daniel generally, but chapter one and chapter six of Daniel that we have delved into a wee bit, they do provoke us to ask ourselves that question. You know, is is you know God called Daniel to be pure in the middle of a very strange, very new, very pagan environment? Uh, and, and assisted Daniel in so doing. And, you know, is, is God calling us somehow in the days in which we live to be pure, to be steadfast, uh, not to be defiled, not to be giving in uh, when temptation comes? And it could look very different from... The, 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 the trials that Daniel faced, but they could for each of us, where we live and the families we have and the workplaces we have, uh, there, there, could, there could be a call of Almighty God for us to seek to be pure. Uh, and that could come at some cost, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. You know, as Daniel's about to find out, uh, you know, sticking to his holiness nearly cost him his life. Um, it's not the first time and it'll not be the last time, uh, but remaining undefiled, remaining pure to Almighty God uh, was a costly decision to make. Uh, and yet because of Daniel's courageous faith, God was able to do amazing things through his servant. Uh, and the faith was protected and God's people was protected in a way nobody, nobody could imagine. I, I want to move us on. Keep thinking about that. that. That's a good wee question. Where where in my life do I compromise and I shouldn't? Where am I? You could ask the opposite question, which is equally biblical, actually. Where in my life do I not compromise where actually in the gospel I'm given freedom? It's the same question from two different angles, and they're both worthy of asking uh, in today's world. I, I, I want, I want, to, I want to, to, to take you to the soaps now, and I have to confess, I am, you know, I am definitely not an expert in the soap operas, <laughs> but I've done a wee bit of research here, and apparently uh, the writers of the soap operas uh, they, 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 they build the storylines up to a, a, a real big, important moment. Yeah. 
And they, they could have as many as five or six different endings to that episode, whether it's EastEnders or Neighbours or Home and Away or whatever it is. And, and they have endless board meetings and writers meetings and actors meetings and uh, meetings with a TV company and whatever about which one of the multiple endings they're going to use. So I was quite intrigued by this and I thought, imagine uh, this moment for Daniel is like a soap opera episode and we're actually going to write two or three multiple endings. Mm -hmm. So we know the one that's in the book, but I want us to imagine what if, so ending number A is what would have happened if Daniel didn't pray? Ending number A, ending number one. So all of this is happening. We've been brought into this, the last five minutes of this episode of, you could call it Daniel and the East Enders, uh, because we are away into the East, uh, where this is all set in Persia. Um, and and the, the trap is laid and the law is passed and they're all standing in the hedges and up the trees and uh, with, 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 with big magnifying glasses and telescopes looking at Daniel's house and he doesn't pray. What do you think would happen next? Write on the story yourself. You've, you, you, we've been right through chapter six. What do you think would have happened? If he hadn't prayed. He hadn't prayed. At all. Probably wouldn't have worked out. Wouldn't have stood him in very good stead, I suppose. You know. I don't know, Emma. He, I mean, he, would, he wouldn't have broken the law. He wouldn't have ended up in the lion's den. Mm -hmm. uh, and he probably would have, would, would have sailed on in his job as prime minister. I know. But, that sounds, pre that sounds pretty well, good to you me. Know, but it's, it depends on, you know, in where you want to stand. You know. What? Well, I, I suppose he would have been compromising his witness for God. Or for his God. But could he have not got that back again on track, Gully? Probably. What I mean? Well, if, if he's praying three times a day, yes, he probably would have got it back on track. But they not just gone away and tried to try to think of something else to catch him out on. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's I, gonna, I have to have to think about it again. I, so, I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm being a bit naughty in this, but Ronnie, I think you're picking up the scent here as a good bloodhound. <laughs> Those folks wouldn't have gone away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if if Daniel thought. The way to get rid of this danger, this temptation, is just to keep, literally, in this case, keep the head down. Uh, or even pray with the window shut mm -hmm. or something. Those boys, I don't think they would have relented. If they had taken such a risk already to try and get rid of Daniel, they would have just been in the next secret meeting as soon as they could manage it. And either another law or another plan would have been hatched and Daniel would have been straight back where he found himself. Do, 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 you, see, do you see where I'm going with that? Mm. That you, you, you could almost start to write multiple different scenarios, but actually none of them, I believe, would have, would have A, glorified God, B, got Daniel over temptation out of danger and have been used by God for the, the, the tremendous blessing of, 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 of his people and, and the, you know, the widespread propagation of the living God across the whole empire. So I think it's a difference, you know, there, it's very easy for us to do a version of that when we face temptation. If I just keep my head down and avoid this wee moment, it'll all go away. But it rarely does. 
you know, because the people around us that are trying to bring us down, and of course they are empowered by the great tempter who is portrayed to us as a prowling beast Ooh. who's not easily going to give up trying to 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 break us and trying to 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 uh break our faith and damage our faith and um, it, it's an interesting little angle that one of the commentators in Daniel 6 did now I'm not going to bore you but he had six different endings <laughs> to to if Daniel did this this would happen the king would have done this and the the prime you know all the other governors would have done this if Daniel had done this instead uh you know uh, what if the king had decided in the middle of the night to write another rule that says that any rule that he signed in the in t- t- the previous twenty four hours he could he could decide you know they had all these different kind of soap opera endings but actually in all of them there was as many difficulties created as there was rescue there wasn't really rescue for Daniel except he behaved the way. He did and remained faithful to God in the face of terrific temptation. And I suppose that 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 is a, again another really provocative question. Because we all face temptations on a daily, hourly basis. Mm-hmm. Now they will not all have the the, the tremendous implications and and consequences as the one Daniel is facing. But in a sense, every big or small temptation is about whether we trust God, mm-hmm. trust ourselves, uh, or trust fate and fortune Ooh. in the world around us to survive. And a lot of the the parallel storylines or the alternative endings, you know, are about trusting your own wit to survive hmm. or trusting that somehow the winds of fate or good luck will get you out of jail free. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas from Daniel 6, from many other passages in the Bible, it is a, it is a steadfast hope in the power of God that is the thing that defeats temptation. Mm. And again, we're brought to Christ Jesus, aren't we? In Daniel facing this temptation and our Lord Jesus facing temptation in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, uh, he could have used his brilliant mind and he obviously had a brilliant mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, He could could have hoped that, uh, you know, he stumbled across a well uh, and uh, you know a Greg's Bakery in the middle of the the, the wilderness, and could have got Great. a few vegan sausage rolls and, and a box of donuts and a few iced lattes and things. And uh, you know, but he had to trust his heavenly Father mm. and the Word of God uh, against extreme temptation of hunger and abuse of power. Mm. Uh, and that is what sent the devil away and got Christ over that temptation and on into the service of Almighty God. But folks, you, you know, be interested to hear, you know, others talk about temptation and their attitude to temptation and and what you maybe do in order to to cope when temptation knocks at your door. Well, I probably take both lines. <laughs> at okay. times, at times, sometimes you stick the head in the sand and hope that it'll disappear, <laughs> or you ignore it, and they hope that it'll disappear. It was away. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you end up praying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Which is precisely what we see, Daniel. You know, yeah. he's in prayer. Uh, I think that, that you know that that's a that, that's a very helpful thing, Richard. That sometimes you ju- we don't know what to do. You know, every avenue seems worse than the other avenue that you've just explored, uh, and you have to bring it to the Lord in prayer. I think that is 
most important and most helpful, Richard. Really appreciate that. Anyone else got anything of encouragement or? I think, uh, one help? of the temptations that people can be faced with is maybe some people talk about stretching the truth a wee bit, telling lies mm. to get out of some situation. But people would tell you to tell lies, you need to have a very good memory. Tell a lie, you'll, I want them to catch you out. You know what I mean? So telling lies is. One of the terms, and you can't be tempted to tell lies to get yourself out of some kind of a tricky situation. Uh, yeah. And that's Sometimes I like you can just not tell the whole truth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, be well, selective, well, Ronnie. Be selective yeah. what you tell. Yeah. 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 Or just be keeping, keeping silent. You can actually be telling a lie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can lie by omission. Yeah. You, you yeah. know, just being selective with the truth is you know, quite a common thing that happens in our society, especially among politicians and people like that. Yeah. They will back and tell you everything. Yeah. And you know, Be, being good Church of Ireland folk, you'll all, you'll all, you, you know that the prayer book prayer when we're saying sorry for what we have done, by what we and for what we have not done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's mm -hmm. there's huge wisdom in those wee phrases mm -hmm. yeah. of the prayer book, yeah. you know, and that's that's speaking right into our conversation. Mm -hmm. That sometimes, even by doing nothing and saying nothing, mm -hmm. yeah, you're given in to to temptation, mm -hmm. and you know what the Lord would have you do. Mm -hmm. You you know what the you know to quote an Alec Mackay special. It's not, to, not not the bits of the Bible I don't understand that worries me. It's the bits of the Bible I do understand that that causes me greatly. I mean that's that rests with me, Alec, and that's very true. We we all know enough. None of us know it all, and we never will. But we all know enough of the Word of God to know what God calls us to. Uh, you know, and that prayer is very hard hitting. You know, for what we have done and what we have not done, uh, you, you know, as 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 a as a big as a big 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 prayer. Yeah. There's been many a time when I I, I sat in management meetings, <sighs> and you 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 sit there, and at the time, when when you disagree, you stand up, you rant and rave, and say you're going the wrong way. Um, and it took me a while just to go not the right place to say that. <laughs> the, the, the good thing in, in the end was the my manager at the time took me into the office and everybody thought, here we go, he's getting the... He's getting the chop. Yeah. But the manager said, at least I know where you stand. I have no mm. idea what the others are saying, what they're thinking. At least you're honest. You say something. Uh. And, and 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 that and once people knew that, uh, yes, you learn a lesson quickly. Yeah. But if that was the manager saying, "Calm down," but at, at least I know you're. Yeah, there you go. You know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. That's helpful. Something is get get you in trouble, but it also get you out of trouble. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> I suppose there's another little side agenda here where we're thinking about uh, defilement, to use that word again, that Daniel word, and what the challenges are today for God's people to stay God's people. That's a good question that Daniel poses, and we need to continue to think about that. We, 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 we are thinking about facing temptation uh, and what that looks like and the consequences of that and the, the costliness, the very real, the painful cost of resisting temptation. Mm -hmm. I suppose there's, there's a third big kind of agenda here, uh, and that is what tends to happen when God's people do well. Mm. You know, all of this, all of this is about a refugee 
who in the most unlikely fashion rises to stardom politically in this foreign empire. And, and it does t- two things, and I think you'll see them very clearly. Daniel gathers a load of enemies mm-hmm. along the way. Critically, he also gathers one fairly important friend along the way. But do the maths. There's 122 enemies and there's one friend. <laughs> Now, the friend happens to be the king, which is pretty useful. But the 122 enemies are a fairly powerful force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a message, there's a message in there for not just how the outside world views a Christian that does well, but even within the fellowship of believers, how we look upon one another. Uh, and 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 you know the same jealousies and, and and entrapments and plans to bring somebody down. Mm. I think that can happen just as readily within the house of God as outside the house of God. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but there's a there there is a a conversation. There's a questioning there. Daniel did well. But by Jove, they're not all applauding him and loving him and saying, didn't the boy do well? Mm-hmm. Isn't it brilliant to see Daniel getting on so well? And look at how well he speaks and look at how well he governs and look at look at the decisions he makes. Isn't he brilliant? Uh, they, hate, they hate him. They hate the ground he walks on. And they, f- they try to find the slightest flaw in his armor. Uh, and I suppose there is a, a reality there that not just Daniel, but the rest of scripture presents to us is that to, to, to follow Christ means to go the opposite direction, often from the crowd, and to be, and to be uh, hated for it, mocked for it, uh, people plot and plan to try and trip you up and, and to bring you down a peg or two. And by Jove, do we need to pray, all of us, in our journey of faith for a few really good, even if surprising friends that you can trust. Um, but I think that's an interesting conversation that that, that is very much enshrined in, in, a, in a lot of, of the story of Daniel. He made a lot of enemies. He kept one or two friends but he kept close to God, and that seemed to be his salvation. I mean, do you feel like that in a way, folks? When you, I mean, do you feel maybe that you 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 have less and less in common with more and more people around you? You know, is that is that is that a fact? Is, is that a generalization, or you, you know, do you experience a wee bit of that? Yeah. I would say I would I would say so because I know my own personal thing and I'd be very you know with some of the people from the church like the Valley and Andre and Richard people like that who I would associate with quite a bit you know so like minded people like you sort of associate with so yeah very much so I would say so yeah yeah it always makes me think of that way um so we cartoon and you know the 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 shoal of fish. And you have all the wee blue fish going this way and the wee orange fish going this way. Do you know, sometimes you have to swim against the, you know, go, go against the flow, so to speak. Um, especially, you know, our world seems so topsy-turvy now, doesn't it? And um, sometimes you find yourself, you, you know, you can exist between two worlds almost, you know, so you have your... Mm. your really close like-minded friends who you know we can talk to and will be of a similar vein of thought a belief and then you, you exist in this other world that's you know oh sometimes just seems the exact opposite 
important, mm. you know. But then sometimes I think we meet people, you know, we talk about the outs, you know, the outside. We meet people who are outside the church who are sometimes kinder and more <laughs> friendly, and uh, and <laughs> you, you, then then people we meet inside our yeah. our church world. I mean, in general, you know. Mm. And um, I always find that quite interesting. I always find that quite interesting. Yeah. Sometimes you feel yeah. like you have more in common with yeah. somebody who who doesn't share your your particular faith, but yeah. essentially at at a level shares your sort of uh, core values. Or not? Yeah. Do, do you understand what I'm trying to yeah, say? No, do you know, no, sometimes you find people um, outside the world of church who you, you can really get on with and, and really yeah. come to understand, but. Mm. Um, but yeah, sometimes it does feel like you're in a. Sometimes I feel like I've just landed on a different planet. Do you know, <laughs> you, you go into situations and you think, "Where? Hold on, where am I? What's what's going on?" Um, but I suppose that's why it's good to have fellowship mm, with yeah. like-minded believers because you know that there's people that you can trust mm. to share things with, people you can trust to help advise you, and. Um, you know, when you face situations outside, so to speak, that are difficult. I don't know whether that answers your question, Mark, but... Um, no, I think there's lots of nodding, Emma. So uh, I think you're touching a nerve <laughs> with a lot of folk with what you've said. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, and it's, it's interesting. I'm not in agreement with the commentators that would, would, would say that the lions in, in this story are not real. Mm. They're figurative. Mm -hmm. And they're asking us to think about the sort of things that surrounded Daniel. Mm -hmm. So he was surrounded by human enemies mm -hmm. and he was surrounded by wild, wild, you know, uh, that, that there weren't real lions because that's ridiculous to think about lions sitting in a room with you with an angel with their mouths shut. And it's a particular school of of. of of, of approach to the Bible that I, I don't I don't agree with, but they try to find a nugget of truth. Uh, and, and, you know, for Daniel, it was like being surrounded by wild animals, but of course he wasn't really surrounded by wild animals. Uh, you know, he was in the middle of an alien culture that wanted to tear him apart, but he wasn't actually in a sealed cave with animals that mm -hmm. could tear him apart. It, you know, as people trying to find some of the elements of truth in God's word, but they can't take the mysterious and the miraculous in God's word at face value. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's something to be learned from that, uh, even if you disagree with the approach to scripture that folks make. Mm -hmm. uh, but but there is an approach to scripture and to stories like this and many others that that is sometimes hard to understand uh, and you're asked to either remove elements of the story or change elements of the story to make them more more normal mm -hmm. more and mm -hmm. more in normal and human experience mm -hmm. but the end of daniel chapter 6 kind of tells us that they, they these were you know, the lions acted like lions at the end of the story oh, <laughs> in, yeah. in a fairly did, brutal did fashion. You know, they tore a whole pile of people to shreds before they even touched the bottom of the pit. So, you, you, you know, there's a, the, the scripture contradicts that, that approach almost. Mm -hmm. But I, I appreciate what those commentators are trying to say, that for the people of God, it can feel like you're in the jungle. It can mm -hmm. feel like everybody's out to get you. It can feel like you're very alone uh, and you really need to pray that God sends you, uh, you know, a very good friend, uh, like the king in this story, who was Daniel's only, only mate at this stage in chapter six. Uh, and even he was powerless to stop Daniel going through that intense mm -hmm. examination. Mm -hmm. um, but I suppose we're, we're, we're to be prepared for, you, you know, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what is the scripture? You know, we should not expect to be treated in any wise different from Christ himself. Mm -hmm. You know, what are we called to do? To pick up our cross and follow him. Because you, you can't get any clearer scriptures that, you know, to be a Christian at times is going to be tough and isolating. 
But if that's what it takes to follow Jesus without defilement and overcoming temptation, he will be with us in the journey we're called to take, no matter how difficult it is. Um, and I, th I think those are the key little areas in, in Daniel chapter 6. And remarkably, we continue to see God drawing a, a, a blueprint, a, a unique blueprint, a plan to protect God's scattered people and even propagate the worship of the living God mm -hmm. uh, through one pretty insignificant gentleman's courage, faith, and obedience. Mm -hmm. uh, and God added a mighty dimension uh, to to uh, an argument about a prayer time, which which seems you, you know it's remarkable. Uh, that, that an argument about a prayer time, a prayer meeting, ended up in a decree that propagated the worship of the living God across a whole empire. Mm -hmm. It's quite astonishing. Uh, and uh, I have to confess to liking the fact that the bad guys get, get it yeah, in the problem. end of this story. They, they, yeah. they get everything. I feel a wee bit sorry for their wives and children. I don't know them personally. It's a, it's a, it's a bit grim that they're thrown to the lions as well. But, the, but their husbands, I presume they're their husbands, they had it coming to them. And it, it, it's, it's a wee bit satisfying, dare I say that, and I probably shouldn't, that, that, that they're munched and there's great, depending on your translation, there's great depiction about their bones being munched and all sorts of things mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the traditional versions, the King mm -hmm. James version of, of, of Daniel chapter six. Uh, I had, a, I had a, a new living translation that's been specially adapted for younger readers. So they put things across in a slightly more gentle <laughs> manner than maybe your versions do. But folks, we've 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 outdone ourselves in in, in time. Mm -hmm. um, I I, th I think that that uh, it's difficult just to cherry pick a couple of chapters out of a huge book. Uh, it is a wonderful book to read. There's many more adventures, many more challenges for Daniel, uh, many more challenges for Almighty God presented in this period of history that his people are in. Uh, but we're simply <laughs> highlighting the fact that uh, God's blueprint can take many forms, uh, many, many different forms. He can bring success from apparent failure. He can do global things from the belief and behavior of one small individual. Uh, and, 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 and he is an amazing God and his power knows no boundaries. Mm -hmm. So to decide to, to not defile yourself. Take lessons from the book of Daniel about how we face temptation. Be aware that if you're being faithful to God, you are already gathering enemies. And, and God willing, you will have a, a friend, a godly friend in need. Uh, if, if this is a blueprint uh, that we can identify and, and let's pray that God will use us uh, in his sovereign will to bring his plans about. Mm -hmm. So I'm maybe going to hand back to, to Emma mm -hmm. to, to bring our time together to a close. And we will come back together again uh, next Wednesday. Uh, and before I do that, I did ask Bishop George to come uh, and, and join our Bible study. But he said he was washing his hair. Now, if you know Bishop George, he's bald. So I sort of smelt a rat about this. That's not really what he said, because I'm conscious Richard's here and he works very closely with Bishop George. And this is better, recorded. <laughs> better tell the truth. And, uh, Bishop George is so busy, he couldn't, he didn't have a Wednesday night free. But he has promised that in the far side of the summer, he wants to come and play a regular part in a series of Bible studies that we will run, either gathered or by Zoom. Uh, so um, he won't mind if this gets to him about his washing the hair crack, I hope, uh, or uh, it was nice knowing you all. And uh, I, I will be in Craggy Island as the rector 
uh, in the near future, uh, looking after sheep. Oh, uh, available uh, or not? Uh, Dougal and Father Jack. Yeah, you go around. Drink, drink, girls. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, so I'm looking forward to that. To to yeah. our bishop coming and uh, encouraging us uh, and being part of our conversation. He, he really welcomed the invitation and looks forward to making it happen when he's got some time in his diary and the hair is all sorted out. So I better stop that now. So we'll, um, Emma, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank to you. Take, thank take, you. Take, take, take this home in prayer for us. Yeah, thank you, Mark. I really I enjoyed that tonight. It was good to um, read with the lines. And I, I was thinking about, you read the news, um, about the, the fisherman from the States who was in the mouth of a humpback whale. So a bad whale. A modern day Jonah. So there's so there's stranger things. There are things out there that we cannot understand. So no. um I thought that was I thought that was quite funny, but um it still happen. Uh, it could still happen. It could be a down land somewhere, but um but mm. thank you. Anyway, it just made me laugh. But uh let, let's pray together. Mm. Um Father, we thank you for the gift of your word. Um, thank you for Mark for um, opening it up to us tonight. Um, Lord, we pray that you would continue to speak to us. And the psalm says, you know, I meditate on your word day and night. Um, speak to us um, throughout the day and uh, the night and the day to come from your word. Mm. May there be something from it that really speaks to us and sticks with us. Um, thank you, Lord, that your word is true and active in our lives it has been from the beginning and will be until the end that we can trust the truth of your word to us we just pray you would bless each one of us and be upon those and that we love be with those who are unable to join us tonight and those who will be watching and listening at a later date so we thank you father and we pray all these things in your son's name and by your spirit Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you, folks. Great to see you. Yes, thank and you, everybody. Always. Thank you, one and all. Yeah. Derek, it's all, I'm always delighted that you make it. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of used to you disappearing and, and just becoming a blank screen. It's always a joy it's when you're here to the very end. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure. After all those weeks, uh, yeah. you're a model of, of endurance and perseverance to us all to keep going. To keep going, and like, and like yourself, Mark, I haven't a clue what bandwidth means. <laughs> well, we can thank we can thank Virgin Media for sorting me out. That's um, it. That's there it. we go. Excellent, excellent. Uh, we're all back on uh, Friday morning for uh, Friday morning coffee, um, and then we have a children's day service on Sunday. So Lucy has prepared a wonderful service for us. So we'll be. Um, and, and the really good thing is on Daniel as well. So oh, there we go. Perfect, we go. perfect. It's a wee word from the Lord. So we'll all be, we'll all be prepared. Our hearts will be prepared for yeah. for Sunday morning. Um, so <laughs> we'll look forward to seeing you all. And um, do take care. God bless you. And uh, see you soon. Thanks for joining night, us. Night, night, everybody. All right, take care, everybody. Night, night.